going to teach you how to use the owl electrophoresis system, how to make gels, and how to run gels with this system. To start off, a lot of times uh, these gaskets, these rubber gaskets, come out of the owl system. So first let's show you how to put them in place. This rubber gasket will make a seal to prevent the agarose from flowing out. You're going to want to put this um, equidistant on the gel like that and then you're gently going to press this in. You'll see it presses in like this. If you're lucky, this gasket will stay in place and you won't have to do this. Can you show it here? How it looks? Can you show the side? Yeah, so it looks like that. Uh -huh. Okay. And again, on the other side, Put this so it's equidistant from both sides. Like that. You don't have to be exact, but get it in the ballpark. Okay. Then you're going to take a few drops of water. I have a squirt bottle here with water. Put a few drops of water here. It's necessary to get this gasket a little bit wet so that it gets slippery and can make a good seal in the owl system. Touch both sides here. Okay. Okay. And to make the gels, you're going to use the gel box itself to form a seal here. And what you're going to do is you're going to get this guy in here. And it can be a little tricky if the gasket is loose, but you're going to wiggle, wiggle this guy. You're going to want to do a rocking motion, a rocking mo. well, here, this, this came popped out. You see my gasket popped out here. This is one of the problems with this system. I'm going to push that back in. I'm going to try again. I'm try to get it started by using your fingers here, and then I'm going to wiggle this in. And you'll see this time it looks like the gasket is not, not getting bent out of place. Okay, we're going to press down hard so that it's level. It's important to be level. Okay. And now we of course we have to put our, our combs in. For this demonstration I'm going to put two combs in and we're going to use the owl system has two different um, two different thicknesses of combs. So we have a one and a half millimeter thick and we have a one millimeter thick. In general, we want to always use the thinnest combs possible um, for our sample. So if we don't have a lot of sample, we want to use the thinner comb over the thick one. It'll give us sharper bands. Okay, so we put this guy in here. It's really simple. Put the thinner comb in there. And again, we'll put a thinner comb here. So we're going to make a gel that is possible of running um, um, two, length, two rows of samples. Okay. Now we have to prepare our agro solution. We need an Erlenmeyer flask or a bottle. We need agarose. We're going to prepare a 1.2% agarose gel. That's the standard um, agarose percentage. Uh, and we're going to prepare 25 milliliters of this. So here I have 0.3 grams of agarose. Put that into the Erlenmeyer. And I have 25 milliliters of TAE buffer. Put that in there. And now we have to microwave this. So let's go over to the microwave. Different microwaves have different power. What we're going for here is to boil the agarose just bring it to boil and then mix it without um, without boiling it out of the Erlenmeyer flask. So here I put 45 seconds. I know the I know the approximate power of this microwave and 45 seconds probably is not going to boil out of control. Um, Alright, 45 seconds is up. The Erlenmeyer is going to be quite hot. So I'm going to use this paper towel like this this so I don't actually hold the Erlenmeyer and I'm going to give it a swirl. Now you'll see that I did not boil all over the place. 
We're going to give it a little swirl and then we're going to give it an honor. 12 seconds or so. trying to do here is we're trying to make sure all of the agarose is dissolved and the way you'll tell that is you won't see any um, like little agarose beads on the outside it'll be it'll look like a homogeneous solution and I think we're very close I do see a few agarose beads here as you can see right here so we're gonna give it let's give it another seven seconds or so When it's hot and boiling, it will. Those beads will slowly dissolve, even if you're not microwaving. That's going to be good enough, right there. Again, you see how I'm holding this. I'm not actually holding the glass. So finally, we have to add ethidium bromide. To our gel. Athenium bromide is a mutagen, so we want to put on gloves here. We add one microliter of athenium bromide per um, for every 20 micro, I mean 20 milliliters. So I'm going to add 1.25 uh, microliters of athenium bromide to our other solution. Very careful to get it just into the agarose solution and not get it in from my all over the place. You can see that it has a warm color. Now it's mixed. Too late. With gloves, you can handle a hot, a hot flask a little bit easier than you can with your bare hands. If it's too hot for you, still you can use your paper towel like this. It needs to be very well mixed. We don't want to create a lot of bubbles, but it needs to be well mixed. And then you're simply going to pour this into the valve system here. Get everything out. And if there are some bubbles, you see we have a bubble right here, we need to move that bubble out of the way. Okay? The way that you would do this is take this pipe. Well, it popped, but we have another tiny bubble here. I'm just going to take this and pop it or move it to the side. Anyway, we're going to let that solidify. Come back when it's solidified. So meanwhile, while the gel is solidifying, we're going to wash out our flask. This tiny amount of um, ethidium bromide that is in here is okay to go down the drain. We're going to want to wash our flask out with hot water not cold water, so that the agarose um, doesn't stick to the inside of the flask. You wash your flask out with normal hot water several times, and then give it two or three rinses with deionized water. Deionized water we can also wash on the outside of it. Now our gel is uh, solidified. And you'll be able to tell that it's solidified because it will change from being perfectly clear to being slightly translucent. As you can see here, now it's slightly translucent. And if I move the gel box, you'll notice it doesn't move anymore. So it's completely solid now. Okay? We need to take our combs out. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to start on one end and raise it sort of like a drawbridge. So one end gets pulled out first. And you do this slowly and carefully. When you do it slowly like that, you won't tear the you won't tear the wells. Now we need to we need to take care of our combs a little bit. So we'll get a Kim wipe with some ethanol. And we're gonna wipe the combs clean. This will ensure that the combs keep on working and don't tear the um, future gels. If they're dirty, they're more likely to tear the future gels and have wells that are torn. 
And then you also have a risk of contaminating athenium bromide and contaminating uh, um, your next gels. And now we got to get the, the gel out of the casting position and into the running position. And to do this, the easiest way is you're going to, you're going to pull, you're going to have a um, rotating action where you pull up on one of the sides hard. It's going to be fairly hard to hold the gel box with one hand and use the other hand to rotate it. You'll see there I'm rotating it out. And I rotate it out and then we're going to wiggle it a little bit to get it the rest of the way out. There we go. Now we put it in the running position. Now we have, we have um, two sets of um, lanes on this gel. And we want to run, we want to put this into the gel box in the right orientation. DNA is always going to run to the positive electrode, which is indicated by red. So we want to run the gel in this direction, not in this direction. Right. So, okay, we'll just put that in there. Put that in the center. There's nothing special to it. Make sure it's to the bottom. You're going to fill the fill the system with TAE buffer. Okay. And carefully pour TAE, TAE buffer into the gel. And the goal here is to fill it, but not overfill it. So we would like to have just like a couple milliliters on top of the gel. That's where we'll get the highest performance. The gel has to be covered, but it shouldn't be swimming in real deep um, liquid. Now that's ready to load and run.